good afternoon again. Good afternoon again. And we have our next talk. It is by Judith Meyer, learning a new, learn a new alphabet through games. And again, if you want to ask questions, use Slido, slido.com, hashtag Babel. You can already ask them now. So then just at the beginning of the Q&A, we already have some questions. And you can also vote on them. So pick a question that you like and just vote it so that we can see which question to answer first. And there is Judith. Thank you very much, uh, Georg. Um, it's always a great, great pleasure to be here at uh, the Polyglot Gathering. And uh, to be among polyglots, it really is uh, a different... I think it switched itself off, but right now I was able to switch it on again. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see if it stays on. Okay. Um, so yeah. Okay. So uh, so for me, it's uh, it's always a, a great uh, a great pleasure to uh, to be among polyglots because I grew up in a very small town where it was not at all normal to speak uh, several languages or even one foreign language uh, outside of school. Uh, my parents are both uh, monolingual, German, and uh, also my extended relatives uh, do not have any example of, of uh, being multilingual. So when I found uh, polyglot forums and Unilang, how to learn any language and so on, it was really like discovering a new universe. Uh, and this uh, universe then materialized because of uh, Richard Simcott and his idea to create the Polyglot Conference uh, and then the Polyglot uh, uh, Gathering, which I helped found. And it's, it's still, and especially after this uh, pandemic, it's just amazing uh, that this community exists and that we managed to find each other. Okay, we're trying, we're trying with this microphone again. Let's hope. So, um, my topic today, uh, learn a new alphabet through games. First, you might want to know why learn a new alphabet. Okay, maybe it's a silly question for polyglot because there's always a use for a new alphabet, right? But uh, if you are not learning any language that has a different alphabet, why might you want to learn the alphabet anyway? And this is an example, practical example. If you're traveling uh, in Eastern Europe or Central Asia and all the street signs are suddenly in Cyrillic, it might be useful to be able to read Cyrillic even if you don't know Kazakh. Um, and the same for uh, Korea, uh, for Greece and, and so on. It's really, really useful just to be able to decipher it even if you don't know a word of the language. This also applies uh, to, say, um, train tables, uh, metro stations, bus lines, um, even to menus in restaurants, you'll be surprised how much you can understand just because you can read the letters. So, uh, how would you go about learning that, assuming you know that it's useful? Um, the traditional method would be to have a big list, maybe a table of uh, letters, and then you learn them one by one, 26 or more, and when you're done, uh, maybe you can read a few words in the target language. Uh, let me say, this is not a brain-friendly way to learn. And it's even worse if you're trying to learn uh, Chinese uh, or Japanese, then you're expected to uh, use these uh, sheets uh, to write the same character 50 times, 100 times, uh, even more often, uh, in order to remember this character. And this method uh, seems to work well for some people in Asia, but not generally for Westerners, and I can tell you why. Uh, it's not that we're too lazy or that our m minds work differently, it's just that we don't use the words often enough. We don't handwrite Chinese or Japanese often enough in real life, in real situations, uh, for this kind of memory to stay active. You may remember this uh, from when you're taking money at the bank, when you go to an ATM and you're trying to withdraw money and your hand moves over the little type pad uh, with your number and you don't even consciously remember your number, you just know the, mov the, mov uh, the movement. And then um, when, you haven't done, uh, when you haven't gone to an ATM for like three months or something, suddenly you have to consciously remember the number because your hand doesn't remember the movement anymore. 
And the same thing happens when you're trying to learn foreign characters in this way, just by writing them over and over and over again. If you don't write this particular character for three months, then your muscle memory will be gone, and you can only stand to remember it if you have an intellectual representation of what you're trying to learn. So, um, how can you make learning the uh, alphabet more interesting? One way is, of course, gamification. Um, so, if you go on Duolingo, uh, you'll have some, some things that make it a bit more easy uh, to remember, or at least to keep going. Uh, for example, you can trace the character with your hand, uh, you can listen to it, you have a little encouragement, nice, you would got that too, all correct, uh, your friends are cheering you on, you have a high score. Uh, this is known as gamification because learning the alphabet is still not a game, but it feels more like a game because there are points to be had and high scores to beat and so on. Uh, a way you can um, gamify it if you like Anki uh, is, um, well, there are several ways, but uh, one of the plugins that I really found useful is called Hanze Stats. So uh, if your goal is to learn 3,000 uh, Chinese characters or Japanese characters, uh, you can use this plugin in order to see where you're at. And you, uh, it will tell you, you got 100% of HSK1, you got 100% of HSK2, you got 98% of HSK3, you go, uh, got this coverage, and then you can also see which characters am I missing, uh, and you can click on each of them and add them to your deck uh, so that you can perfect uh, any section of Hansel. That's already uh, helpful. Uh, for me, it was uh, motivating when I was uh, studying Hansel. Um, there's also a heat map that you can use in this sense. Uh, so this is another plugin. All of these are plugins. So you have to go to like the desktop version of Anki. Uh, you go to plugins and you can download these. They're free. Uh, this way, with the heat map, you can see how much did you study and when. You can try to have a streak, like with Duolingo, those streaks. And no, there are no streak freezes. You actually have to study Anki every single day. <laughs> um, so that's uh, another way to make Anki uh, more gamified. And uh, now let's talk about actual games, because gamification is not the same as a game. So, um, one thing you could do if you're learning a foreign alphabet that happens to has have other numbers is you could get these dice that actually have foreign numbers on them. I wish I had brought some from Berlin. Unfortunately, I didn't, but uh, they do exist, and uh, you can find them for every single alphabet in the world. You can find Thai, you can find Burmese, you can find anything. Um, and uh, there are 10-sided dice, so on each dice uh, you have uh, 10 numbers, you know, like the basic numerals. If you start playing well with those, if you're playing a game like um, Yahtzee or so, you can easily learn the numbers. You can also use uh, a game that I developed, uh, well, it, the original idea is not mine, obviously, uh, 2048, you may know this. Uh, 2048 is a uh, game where you're trying to get the number 2048 uh, on one of those uh, little squares. If you haven't tried it yet, um, you missed like uh, several years of internet. Um, so what I did is I created a version, okay, switching microphones again. Um, I created a version with uh, different, um, well, character sets. You can play it with uh, Chinese, uh, Japanese numbers. You can play it with Thai numbers. You can play with whatever language uh, numbers you want to learn, with Arabic uh, numerals and so on. Um, you just go to my website, which is learnlangs.com uh, slash 2048, uh, and you can play with these uh, different uh, numbers and learn the numbers in foreign scripts. Here's an example with Thai numbers. Okay, um, this is a method to actually learn characters, uh, not just the numbers, which is a very small set of uh, characters, but actual characters, any characters that you want to learn. Uh, you might create a Sudoku. Um, you know, this, the basics of Sudoku has nothing to do with numbers, right? They just use the numbers 1 to 9 because they're convenient and they're different from each other. But in fact, you could put nine different symbols uh, of any kind. In this case, I used a Sudoku in order to learn 
uh, nine Chinese characters that happened to be very, very similar and that I was confusing all the time. Uh, like uh, the ones that I wrote on the right. So basically, um, I got myself a Sudoku generator and uh, wherever there was the number nine, uh, I replaced it with the ninth character. Whereas the, wherever there was the number one, I replaced it with the first character and so on, uh, in order to get this kind of puzzle. And then after that, uh, I just solved it. Uh, so this is something that you can uh, you can do yourself. Any Sudoku? <laughs> what, what's happening? It's I, I like this. I li it, um it's having a little uh, um, white sound all the time, so that's why uh, you can't use this. Okay, recording. okay. But, uh, fresh batteries now. Okay, let's hope, let's hope. Um, so, yeah, in this case, uh, these characters, I'm not sure if you can see from the back, but they're really quite uh, similar. Uh, basically, um, some of them contain parts of each other and some of them don't. Um, there's a difference where you have like the little s uh, square and then the line, or first the line and then the square, and uh, yeah, those changes, or alternative, you have like a hook. Uh, so, basically, if you have a few characters or letters, you could do this with foreign letters. If you have, uh, I don't know, um, nine letters in Thai that you confusing, uh, you could... If you have like nine letters in, in Thai that you keep confusing, you could do the same thing. Just uh, generate a Sudoku and uh, online, you can find it anywhere, in Sudoku generator, and you just replace the number nine with one of the characters, number two with a different one, number three with a different one, and so on. And after that, you try to solve it. Um, you'll never look at the characters as much as you need for <laughs> solving that Sudoku. <laughs> um, okay, that's one idea. Another idea uh, is to do word search. Now, there are actually people who have produced books of word search uh, for, say, Arabic and uh, other languages. You can go on Amazon, you can buy these uh, word search uh, books. Um, for Arabic in particular, I'm not entirely convinced that it is useful because you see the letters separated, so you'll never need to recognize a word written in separated letters. But maybe if you're just at the very beginning and you're trying to remember the sound of each letter, um, it could be useful in, in practicing that. Um, for other languages, li like say Cyrillic, I can totally see it being useful. If you have like a, a word search all with uh, Cyrillic letters and you have to find uh, useful words within that word search, yes. Um, another thing um, that I like to use is to just find the letters. Like treat uh, any such picture as a find the letter exercise. And you try to find the letter H uh, throughout this text. Um, this is a trick that you can play on your mind because when you first look at this kind of text, it just looks like a wall of text. It looks like a picture, right? Your mind is refusing to treat it as letters. Uh, so in order to st start treating it as letters, you can do this kind of uh, word search exercise, not word search, but letter search exercise. Or if, you uh, if you're studying Chinese or Japanese, you just look, uh, look for a, a particular common character, like uh, the in, in Chinese, uh, and you just try to find it, all occurrences of it within the text. Um, and this will force your mind to, to read the letters, to, to read the characters, uh, to see them as individuals and not as part of one particular pretty picture. Um, Another idea is to play cryptograms. I'm not sure how, how many of you know the word cryptogram. Yeah, so from, from uh, Greek, uh, crypto is uh, hidden and a gram is uh, written um, or a letter written. So um, basically it's a form of enigma where each letter is replaced by another symbol. It could be another letter, it could be a symbol, it could be anything at all. Um, my local newspaper used to have cryptograms uh, in every Sunday edition and uh, they would put anything. It could be like one week they would put uh, flags, uh, another week they would put uh, fruit. Uh, it was always a quote in German um, but written with these uh, different uh, symbols. So like the letter A was an apple sometime, or sometimes a banana, it doesn't have to do anything with the letter. And then the letter B is um, a melon or whatever. And you have to figure it out. You just see this written in symbols rather than letters. And if you spend like two or three hours on a Sunday morning, you can figure out which uh, symbol is which letter. And one time uh, they made the mistake 
of using Chinese characters as symbols. So instead of uh, banana, you had the character for I. Instead of um, the letter E, they had uh, the word for uh, the character for woman. And uh, it, of course, it has nothing to do with Chinese. Uh, they just use the symbols like they use flags, like they use um, any objects, like they use any fruit, just as a stand-in uh, so that people have something to figure out. And uh, for me, that was a big uh, breakthrough because uh, I realized uh, when people spend two or three hours like this trying to figure out which character corresponds to which letter in German, and afterwards, they know nothing about Chinese. It's, it's, it's absolutely useless. Uh, I mean, okay, it's, it's good as a puzzle. It's, it keeps the brain active, okay. But uh, um, if you're going through all that trouble uh, to figure out which ca Chinese character matches which letter in German, uh, then you might expect the result to be somewhat useful, right? <laughs> um, so I figured you could really do this kind of uh, these kind of cryptograms with real letters and then have the solution be the actual sound of those letters. Uh, and that is something that um, I decided to pursue. This was uh, the impetus I needed to, to write my books about uh, learning uh, foreign alphabets. And this is uh, one for, for kids, but... Uh, you could take anything. You could take, uh, say, a menu and treat it as a cryptogram. Uh, so if you're just looking at it long enough and uh, you don't have any reference book, let's say you don't use Google, you don't use Wikipedia, you don't look at a list of uh, Cyrillic letters, you just look at this um, picture long enough, can you figure out what each letter stands for? What is the sound of each letter? I think that you can. I mean, you start with the obvious. At the top, it says pizza, right? So you already got the letter P, you got the letter I, you got the letter T. Um, and uh, then you look through some other things. Of course, some, some names of pizzas are not uh, familiar, but some of them will be, like the third, the third one on the left. Um, can anyone who does not speak Russian read that? Margarita, yes. So, okay, you got the letter M, you got the R, you got the G. So, um, of course, you have no idea how, how Russians would pronounce it. But um, it's fun enough as a game. You can figure out what each of the letters stand for. Um, you can do the same game with Wikipedia. Just go to the article on some country. Actually, it's better if a friend sends you an article, because otherwise you already know the solution. Or maybe you... you um, uh, look at it, and then like a month later, you, you send it to you, and uh, yeah, the, the, the issue is you mustn't look at the, the solution before. But you go to a Wikipedia article in a foreign language on something that wouldn't get translated, like a country name or a city name. Uh, and then you play cryptograms with that. You try to figure out which city or which country are we looking at. Uh, have you figured it out yet? The first one is Greek. Yeah, Afghanistan, Afghanistan. Uh, and the next one in Arabic? <laughs> nope, not Las Vegas. San Francisco, yes. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you can play that. Obviously, it's easier when you've already got a basis in uh, Arabic letters. Let's say you do one hour looking at the Arabic alphabet, and after that, you can play cryptograms, and you can just try to read different city names and different country names and figure out. Most of them will be the same, okay? Sometimes you have a few um, cities that uh, are called uh, uh, different, differently, um, but that's really not the rule. So that is also the idea that uh, I used in my script hacking books. Well, all of uh, what I well, sev several of the things that I mentioned uh, is already used in my books. Uh, how might that use, uh, look in practice? So we're looking at uh, the Greek book right now. At the top, uh, you have this letter search uh, exercise. So it's a text that you're not supposed to be able to read. You're just supposed to look for the letter. Uh, in this case, uh, the, the letter Tav, uh, the, the Greek T. So you just look for it, and you find five of them. And after that, uh, there is some very easy reading uh, using the letters that have been introduced so far. Um, do I have a pointer? 
Yes, I do. Okay. So in this part, you look for the letter T, and in this part, uh, you're just trying to read based on the letters that you know so far, which are very few. Uh, and then on, you, you can write a bit, there's something to write, but then you get the next letter. And again, you have an exercise, okay, to write this, uh, a mnemonic, obviously. Uh, here, you can look for the letter again. And then we follow, eh? where am I? Okay, up here. Uh, another reading exercise. This is like cryptograms again. With I'm making it a bit easier because I realized that the average person may not do cryptograms for fun. Uh, it's really something uh, um, for, for people who like to be challenged a bit more. So for, for these books, I make it a bit easier by giving you a clue. Uh, and, uh, of course, for, by explaining the letters a bit earlier, but the original idea was really to do cryptograms that are true, where each letter actually is what it says it is. And then you get another letter, in this case the letter S, which has three forms in, in Greek, quite unusual, um, with an explanation, with a mnemonic, and then uh, practice, and another text where you can find all the letter S's. In and more reading. So, um, how much time have we got? Yeah, we got time. So let's let's just do it so you can feel because uh, it's it's one uh, one thing to to say it like this. It's another to to feel the um, effect. I would like all of you, especially the ones that cannot yet read Greek, uh, to do these uh, few exercises with me. Um, so we're starting up here with the name of a band. Um, uh, everyone who can already read Greek, please stay silent. Uh, who cannot yet re uh, read Greek and would like to read these? <laughs> yes? <laughs> what, what is the first, just the first one here? Toto. Toto. Ye yes, I, I wanted you, but uh, okay. You can do the next one. Cacao, yes. And the third one? Tak tak, yes. So basically, with, with these letters, it's fairly easy because the, the T is just a bit smaller than you expect. It looks like a, it looks like a capital T that has shrunk, shrunk in size. And the same with the letter K, which looks like a capital K shrunk in size. But it's not a big um, um, impediment to understanding. Now, for the Yota, uh, you have to remember there's no accent on it. Normally, there's no accent on the I in Greek. Uh, except when it marks the um, uh, the word stress. Okay, a few more things to read here. I heard it. Kit, yes. And <laughs> someone else. Tic tac, yes, tic tac. Okay, at the beginning, when you have like four or five letters, you really have to be inventive to find a few words that can be read with that, but after that, it gets easier and easier. So, let's try with the letter sigma. Uh, you might know the capital one from um, math. It's the sum, the symbol for sum, which also starts with a s sound, so this is sigma. Um, this is the small uh, sigma, which um, looks like an O with an extra loop, uh, with, with an extra line at the top. Uh, and then this one looks like a, like almost like our little s, but uh, the proportions are not quite right. This one is used only at the very end of words. Okay, we have a few more words to read, and now it's starting to get a bit more difficult. Let's try these. Asia, yes, Asia. Um, this toast, toast, yes. Greek island, Eos, Eos. Uh, this one, Statikos. 
the, the accent shows you where the word is stressed. I really, really like this feature about Greek because uh, I'm missing it in uh, Russian. Most of the things I read in Russian do not tell me where the word is stressed. But in Greek, it's always written with word stress, except if you're chatting with someone really lazy. Um, so this is uh, static, um, statikos. And this word, tsai, tsai, yes, because in Greek you don't have the ch, you ha just have tsai. <laughs> Easy way to, tr uh, to spot a Greek is they cannot pronounce the sh and the ch. And uh, last one here. Sock, sock, as in shock, but sock, yes. <laughs> okay, one more letter, then I'll uh, let you stop learning Greek for now. You can still do it later. Uh, this is the letter R, um, Rho in, in Greek, and it looks like a P, but it really is the letter R. And here we have a few more uh, words to read. You see, they bec become more and more, right? Uh, with each letter that you get, you can read more things. And that makes it uh, so easy to learn a whole alphabet. Once you have a few first few letters, there's so much uh, you can practice. And I really hate uh, most textbook authors uh, who give you like a table of letters uh, that you have to learn completely. Like not just one or two letters, but like 26 letters. And after that, you get like five words to practice with, and then you're good to go. <laughs> you can really make it much more brain friendly. So uh, let's try these uh, countries. Who wants to read the countries? Yes? Croatia, Iraq, Croatia, Qatar, Costa Rica, yes. Then cities, yes? Maybe this side of the room, I haven't heard as much from you. This side of the room? Cairo. Yes. Cairo, then? Caracas. Caracas, yes. Rio, yes. A Greek island? Ikaria, yes. Ikaria. Careful, the A, this is the A, this is the O. And the S looks like this. Well, the final S looks like that, and the middle S looks like that. Costa. Yeah. Okay. Um, some things you can read. Carta. Yes. Historia. Satira. Yes. Satire. But satira. Okay. This is the one thing when you're using this method. Uh, sometimes the word won't, won't word, words won't be exactly as in English. They may be slightly different, but you can still recognize them after you read them, especially when you have a hint. And that's really what I'm going for. Um, the idea that you read something like, ah, oh yeah, I know this. Uh, that's the effect uh, that little children have. Uh, that's why they annoy their parents so much reading every single thing they see. Uh, it's because they actually find it exciting. They, le they read something, Ford, 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 Mama, it says Ford. <laughs> and, and we have lost uh, this excitement. Uh, but we can find it again by learning another alphabet. <laughs> so, uh, what does this say? Score. Yes. And this? Rock, yes. Curry, curry, as in curry. Yes, very good. So, so you get the idea, right? Uh, I combine uh, a few of the things uh, that uh, I mentioned. Obviously, I'm not combining the dice uh, or other ideas, but um, uh, basically, I'm trying to make it as uh, brain-friendly as possible to learn a new alphabet. And as polyglots, okay, it's you can learn the Greek alphabet without uh, having me hold your hand through every single letter of them. Um, you can find your exercises, you can find uh, country names on Wikipedia and city names on Wikipedia. You don't really need uh, that, but try learning Arabic. Um, if you're trying to learn Arabic or um, uh, Devanagari, uh, you have uh, your, work, uh, your work cut out for that. And I found uh, even polyglots uh, who gave up on learning Arabic uh, or Persian or Hindi because uh, they found the alphabet too much of a challenge. And of course, uh, for regular people, 
let's say, an expat living in Dubai. There are actually experts in Dubai that haven't learned uh, to read, just to read, like, uh, st street names, subway names, uh, after five years of living there, because uh, these alphabets are, are not straightforward. So that is why uh, I plead for a brain-friendly way of, of learning these alphabets. Um, and then what I also do in these books is I bring in some real-world uh, examples, like uh, in this case, the, the job is to read the, the word. I'm not sure if it comes th through quite clearly here in the picture like this. Kentro, yes, Kentro. Um, so throughout the books, um, you see pictures uh, of streets in um, in, every, uh, in every country uh, for which I write these books, and uh, you can try reading some real, real Greek, real Korean, real everything. Um, okay, that's uh, the method, and that's uh, how I learn foreign alphabets. I'm happy to answer your questions. A uh, similar plugin for Japanese kanji. I think I've saw I saw one, but I'm not entirely sure now. Um, I think you may even be able to use the Hanze stats, but then of course you don't have the right uh, frequency list. You can just use it to, to see how many characters you have, but yeah, um, not entirely sure. Um, Okay, Wikipedia has special random and special random in category that will bring you to a random article without revealing what it's about. Yes, so this is something that uh, you could use. Uh, thanks for mentioning it. So uh, let's say you pick the car category countries um, in the Arabic Wikipedia in order to get a random country name that you could read. Yeah, that could be something to do, though if you actually go to the article page, then you have the problem, you probably recognize the country from the flag and the pictures uh, and everything else. So you'd have to like copy the name before you land on that page. Or maybe you just ask a friend to do it for you. And um, can we uh, purchase your books after this talk? Uh, yes. So. Uh, the thing is that uh, I only brought a limited number of books because I didn't want to break my back. Uh, <laughs> and I sold most of them uh, yesterday at the Polyglot Expo. But I kept one book for each language, uh, so s uh, seven languages. Uh, these books uh, exist so far uh, for uh, Greek, uh, Russian, Arabic, Persian, Korean, uh, Devanagari uh, Hindi, and uh, Korean. Did I mention, miss any? No, I think I got them all, yes. And uh, you can have a look to see how uh, they use uh, what I just uh, wrote, uh, what I just talked about. Um, I put them right outside this room so you can browse them. And um, when people are done browsing, I will s uh, sell them to those people who weren't able to buy yesterday. Okay. Um, can the Russian script uh, writing book also be used to learn how to read in Bulgarian? Or is it really just for Russian? No, you can also use it for, for Bulgarian. Uh, there is an extra chapter at the back which teaches you extra letters that you might need if you're learning Serbian, if you're learning Mongolian uh, or Bulgarian in this case. Uh, the only thing is that uh, you have to work more on your pronunciation because uh, all of these books come with audio. Uh, free audio, you just go to library.teachyourself.com, you can listen to every single word uh, from the exercises. Uh, and of course, if you're listening to that audio for the Russian book, then it will all sound very Russian. If you're trying to achieve a good Bulgarian pronunciation, you will need to work with a Bulgarian native speaker. Uh, but yeah, uh, considering there are not that many materials uh, for, say, learning Bulgarian or Mongolian uh, Cyrillic, uh, you can definitely use the books. Um, your script hacking book helped me learn Arabic. Thank you. Yeah, well, it's always uh, nice to hear. <laughs> I'm not sure who, who wrote it, but uh, I'm always uh, very happy to, uh, to hear that. She, yes. <laughs> Th uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. I, uh, I'm, I'm very happy. I, I originally wrote these books uh, for myself, you know, um, because I wanted to learn a bunch of languages uh, with foreign alphabets or even just the alphabets to be able to, to read uh, signs when I go abroad, 
and uh, there was nobody teaching uh, the alphabet in a brain-friendly way. I looked at various materials, especially for Arabic, that was my first one, uh, and there was just nothing out there. So I created this, and in fact, because I could not teach myself an alphabet that I didn't know, I created a computer program to do it for me. So um, basically, because, because I study computational linguistics, I have a few tricks up my sleeve. So I just uh, give it this program about 700 words, uh, like country names, city names, personal names, uh, international words like taxi, hotel, um, taekwondo, uh, kiwi, uh, anything that um, might reasonably be the same uh, in Arabic. Sometimes it isn't. Banana is the same in several languages, but not Arabic. Uh, so, I have a list of words that I use for this purpose, about 700. Uh, I feed it into the algorithm, and the algorithm then um, spits out a, uh, a rudimentary course, which tells you, first, you learn the letter B, then you learn the letter A. Uh, you can now read this uh, Swedish rock band, ABBA, okay. Um, and it spits out, uh, next, you learn the letter N. You can now read this word, Ba banana, banana. Okay, I can use it like that. It's it's not a perfect course. It's not. Uh, it doesn't have uh, many explanations, but I it does work. It's uh, basically an optimization pro uh, problem. Uh, which words can you use uh, in order to have a perfect uh, and optimized way of going through the letters? I'm trying to optimize the number of words that can be uh, re that you can read with each new letter. So I'm trying to introduce the w the those letters first that uh, uh, give you the most uh, words to read immediately. Not, not now, because they often come up later, but yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, I see a question there. Did you have? <laughs> uh, can, can are the words quite which are not explicitly able, not usually used, uh, define something or help people at all or something like this? Yeah, um, you can use this for basically any alphabet, right? You can use it to learn Klingon if you want. The thing is, you need um, this kind of um, list of uh, familiar words. And um, I think that for ex ex extinct languages, it will be harder because you don't have so many country names, you don't have so many common words. But yeah, um, if, you ha if you're trying to learn something really obscure uh, and you have such a list of words, uh, I can feed it into my algorithm. I can send you the result. You have like a basic course for it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Let's see. Uh, you're planning to add more languages, Georgian, Armenian, yes. Um, I would like to, um, but it really depends on my publisher. So all of these uh, books are published by Teach Yourself, and I'm really grateful because uh, they re uh, look really nice. Uh, also, the color scheme, you can have all seven uh, of them um, next to each other in your bookcase, and it looks really uh, distinguished, and the, the colors all fit. I couldn't have never have done that. I'm, I'm, I'm terrible with colors. I'm, uh, terrible with uh, with layouting and all that. So I'm really grateful for them, but it also means that I cannot just say, okay, I'm going to produce a Georgian course right now. So um, I'm trying to convince them to add more languages, and um, maybe if you write them, you can like nudge the decision as well. If you let them know that you're interested in that, uh, there's always a question, how much of an audience is there, right? Okay, um, can we buy your books online? Uh, yes, uh, of course. There are a few, a few versions even exist as e-books. Basically, it depends on which languages are well supported by Kindle. You can buy them on Amazon for, for Kindle. Um, you can also buy them from any bookstore. If you don't know a bookstore near you that uh, could order these books, you can go to bookdepository.com. Uh, and they have uh, free worldwide shipping. So you can definitely get it, even if you live in Kosovo or so on, you can get uh, these books uh, shipped to you. Or otherwise, you just ask your, uh, your um, local bookstore to order them for you, support a local bookstore. Um, because they are published by Teach Yourself, uh, it's really no trouble to get them. It's not like self-publishing where you have to know someone who knows someone. Okay, is there anything else? Uh, would it be difficult to add indexes to your books? Uh, which letters is introduced on which page? Well, it's possible to do. I haven't thought about doing it because uh, you really have to go f uh, from beginning to back. 
um, because the, the, the course is structured in such a way that if you skip one letter, then suddenly you cannot read half the exercises uh, on the next page. So I really would like you to go from the beginning to, to the back. Also, if you're browsing the books now, have a look at them in that way. Don't just look for a random page, because that won't look so different from uh, other courses that you have. But the, the key is really in the structure, where you learn four letters, and as soon as you learn the fifth letter, you're practicing all four letters again. And then you're learning a sixth letter, and you're still practicing the five letters that you learned before. It is uh, very structured. Um, do you think that the order of letters would be different if you analyzed all the words of the language and not only seven, not 7,000? No, I'm not uh, analyzing 7,000, I'm analyzing 700 words, but all of the words are words that you recognize. Country names, city names, uh, international words like uh, taxi and admiral and bank and uh, uh, taekwondo and anything like that. Personal names, Maria. Um, so, of course, when you have international words, the letter dis uh, distribution does not necessarily match uh, the distribution of native words. Uh, but this is the way that you can learn more easily. Because for the brain, it's a huge difference whether you're learning the letters and then you have an exercise that asks you to read Sachlen. Okay, you, you wouldn't even notice if you made a mistake. Let's say you, you misread the H and you, uh, you read it Aklan, Saklan. You wouldn't know, right? Um, that is why it's so important to use words that you recognize so that you have a chance to catch yourself and correct yourself and so that you get this childlike excitement of, Mama, I can read banana. This says banana. <laughs> Uh, that is really what, uh, what I'm going for. So that is the, uh, the analysis I did. And it's not the overall frequency. I'm not teaching you the letter C. Uh, no, I'm not teaching you the letter H very uh, at the beginning just because it appears in the letter combination SH. I'm teaching you the, the, the letter that is most useful to read something with the four other letters that you have. W uh, I, you, I know my algorithm knows you have learned these four letters. Which fifth letter could I teach you to give you the most words? And after that, which sixth letter could I teach you to give you the most words to read? That is the optimization problem. Um, what is your suggestion to use your methods on languages that use English alphabet, for example, for German? Well, if it's the English alphabet, you don't need uh, this um, approach. I mean, you're not learning a new alphabet, right? Uh, that is also why there's no script hacking for, say, German. Uh, so then you just need uh, a regular course, like uh, teach yourself complete German or uh, assimil German, something like that. Um, I would uh, recommend to use a lot of audio, of course. Um, you may even want to do a bit of uh, listening reading if you're afraid uh, that you won't completely learn the, German, the, the sounds of German. Have you heard of the method listening reading? Uh, it basically means you need a parallel text and a matching audio. So you have like a German story by Hans Christian Andersen or something like that, and then uh, uh, a translation, and you read the German while, while hearing it uh, in your ear, hear hearing the audio book at the same time, and uh, also comparing it with the translation. And that way you can uh, acquire the sound of the language uh, relatively quickly. I also recommend, uh, if you're not yet familiar with the IPA, definitely learn the IPA, the International Phonetic Alphabet. Um, because with the inf International Phonetic Alphabet, uh, you can, y well, you're learning the, the categories that you need in order to, to decide how a, a sound is pronounced. Uh, and you can actually compare and contrast what you're doing with what you should be doing in order to pronounce uh, the word correctly. So, um, Let's say in, in German, so many Germans are unable to pronounce uh, the, the company, uh, company name, Apple, right? Uh, in German, when you ask a German, they call it Apple, Apple computer, not Apple. Uh, so I when you look at, uh, how, how would you even start to, to find out what is going wrong there? You look at the IPA, they have a vowel chart, and it shows you uh, the symbol for E, uh, and the symbol uh, for A um, is in a different place in this, um, in this chart, uh, and it basically marks that 
the A is uh, more open than the E. But it's only when you, when you re refer to these symbols rather than the weird descriptions that you get in textbooks, like A, like father, and then you ask a Briton, an American, how is the word father pronounced, and it's completely different. Um, you really need a, a reference for uh, the, um, a, a reference that does not use the Latin alphabet, but a, an external reference, so that you can actually compare the sounds and talk about them in a meaningful way. So that is what I would recommend if you're um, trying to learn the Latin alphabet for German. And you already know the Latin alphabet, yes. Oh, and this also works uh, for Ukrainians uh, learning uh, the Latin alphabet. There are actually um, older Ukrainians that can only read Cyrillic. Uh, I have uh, been in contact with some of them and I created uh, a very rudimentary course uh, to teach them the Latin alphabet uh, using the same or very similar method as uh, these uh, script hacking books. Um, basically using a lot of German words that they would recommend, uh, th that they would recognize, uh, or uh, Ukrainian uh, personal names written uh, in Latin letters, uh, and then trying to optimize the order of introduction so that they get one letter at a time, um, and basically use that in order to introduce them to the sounds of German so that they can uh, like ask for a street that they need to go to uh, or recognize that street when they're on it. Uh, it's a, su a supremely uh, useful skill which you only realize when you go abroad to a country that uses a different alphabet. Okay, um, oh, there's another question. <laughs> I thought I was at the end here. Uh, what's your suggestion to use your methods on... No, this is the one I answered, okay. Sorry, so yeah. Um, Feel free to uh, talk to me also in, in private. If you're a bit uh, embarrassed with your question, you can just approach me either here or later. And uh, you can have a look at the script hacking books right outside the door. Thank you very much.